Last week, we spoke about how you can declare and manipulate a single valued reference type attributes, for example, the trainer of a member. That's what we did. We did lots of uh, G-Unit testing and also tracing on the paper and also on debugger. So that's something I assume you're already uh, comfortable with. Please make sure you review the notes and also tutorial videos if you got doubts about single value attributes. And at the end of last week, we also spoke about how you can declare uh, multi-valued uh, reference type attributes, for example, facilities of a member. And you can see we're using the array uh, notation over here. So every element at a particular index uh, store and uh, the address of some facility objects. So that's the principle you want you want to remember from last time. Okay, and then this week we are simply just going to uh, expand uh, the mini uh, the manipulation of this particular attribute over here, and then we'll see uh, how much time that might be left, and we can do some extra exercise uh, to conclude our uh, introduction to OOP. All right, before I continue uh, to start this week, I would like to point to you uh, important. Uh, uh, notes and also tutorial uh, for you to actually study. Uh, one is required, the other one is optional. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, remember this exercise I gave to you at the end of last week. I said this will be some challenging exercise uh, if you're uh, if it's your first time seeing multi-value reference time attributes. However, there was one written note I gave to you. Uh, that one is actually required notes. You can also see the link from your lab number six uh, PDF instruction. Let me point to you that uh, first, and then I will also point out some uh, uh, optional reference. Let's now, first of all, go to the PDF uh, over here. So this is the notes about point, point collector, and point collector tester. So you can find the link uh, either from the lecture site, uh, and also you can also find it from uh, the PDF instruction for your lab number six. You can definitely find it. It's a required uh, reading for you to do. And pay uh, pay special attention to the final stage uh, for this particular notes about how you can define the accessor method get points in Crojan number one. So that one is going to return selectively an array of points that actually uh, exist in the first Crojans. So that's something uh, you want to uh, study very carefully. Okay, and also I did lots of visualization in the notes as well. I will try to do a little bit of uh, something like that in uh, this week's tutorial video as well when we uh, program the fitness club uh, application. So that's about the required uh, written notes. What about optional uh, example if you want to uh, have, right? Let's go back to our uh, winter 19 Java tutorial videos. I have been pointing references to you throughout the semester. For those of you who actually chose to do the videos, uh, good for you. I think uh, uh, it would be beneficial for you. If you haven't got a chance, uh, I would say it's your choice. But if you really want to do some optional examples for OOP, you, can, uh, you still have a chance over here. So I would say uh, you can start with video uh, for this week, 40 to 46. So basically all the way to the end. So this is just another example over here about student management system uh, as opposed to fitness club. Very similar programming pattern where you have to uh, actually declare uh, reference type attributes, either single valued or multi value but the examples uh, are simply just different. So I would suggest if you want to do uh, extra examples, that will be the way to go, okay? All right, so that's about the references I would like to mention in the beginning of this week. Let me now go back to uh, Eclipse and let's set up uh, the project for this week. Let me close the tab over here. So uh, we're going to copy just the model package from week number seven to week number eight. But let's create a week number eight project first. Okay, let me uh, collapse that. Uh, right click and then new Java projects. And then let's say week underscore 08. 08 and then say finish and then make sure you don't create the uh, module info.java file and now we got week number eight okay before we copy over the classes let's create the three packages as usual okay i will just create the empty console apps and you can feel free to actually add in uh, as many console applications classes as, as you like so that one will leave optional to you but you can see for now i have shifted the focus to mainly just the JUnit tests but later on when we do maybe two two-dimensional array later i might actually come back to the console applications to to show to you but for now uh for this week it's mainly going to be JUnit tests uh still all right another package under source will be uh let's say JUnit tests all right and the final one will be model package. 
And then let me go say finish over here. All right, so now we got all the three packages over here. And let's now copy over some classes. If you expand the pack, uh, the project for week number seven, expand source, expand model. So I would like you to copy all these uh, three classes over here. You got facility, you got member, you got trainer. I want all these uh, three, okay? So you can simply say copy over here, and then you can paste into the empty model package for week number eight. All right, so we got three packages over here. Everything should compile. There should, there should not be any error. And then uh, the JUnit tests uh, over here will still be empty. That's okay. We're going to create a JUnit test later. All right. Okay, so that's how we set up this week's projects. And then let's now click on uh, uh, member over here. All right. And then I would like you to actually uh, make sure you actually review uh, this particular page. Uh, let me switch to iPad quickly. Okay. So if you go back to last week, remember I spoke about when you actually declare uh, the uh, facilities uh, attributes over here under member, right? Okay, let's compare. We actually compare trainer versus facilities, right? They are basically just two attributes. They're both reference type, which means they somehow store references. However, for trainer, it's a single valued attributes, uh, meaning that it's only going to store a single address for some trainer object. For example, you can see the trainer field over here for this object here and the trainer field for this object over here, they store only a single address. So that's why they're only pointing to a single object. On the other hand, when we talk about, uh, let's say facilities, so now its type is actually an array and storing at each index in the array will be a facility uh, object's address. So for example, let's say you can see the facilities failed and the facility failed here for these two context objects, right? You can see uh, this part over here stores the beginning address of some array over here. Uh, in this case, they're, they're simply just separate arrays. And then each element in the array, you can see uh, at index zero, index one, index two, index zero, index one, index two. Every one of them is simply store the address of some facility object. For example, at index zero, for this, uh, for the facilities of this particular context objects, we simply store the address of this particular facility objects and so on for other fields as well. All right, it's a very important uh, review uh, for you to do before you go on with uh, for this week. And you can re also read, in, uh, read about this definition here. Let's read it again. So we are saying that the facilities over here stores the starting address of some array. It's the starting address over here where each index of the array stores uh, stores the address of some facility object. For example, index one stores the address of this particular uh, facility, facility objects. All right. It's a very quick recap from last time. It's the most important thing to carry on uh, for this week. All right, let me, let me now go back to Eclipse and then uh, let's see what we should do. I would say I would do this particular method in the next video. But before that, I need to uh, help you understand how exactly do we do some basic manipulation for the array. For example, when we first created this particular array, let's say here, when we first create the array, every uh, index is simply just going to store now, the now address, which means it's only, only going to point to now, here is going to point to now, and here is also going to point to now. But the question is, how do we gradually add in the addresses of maybe this particular facility uh, address to store that into index zero, and also for this facility object to store that into index one? How do we actually do that? So last week when I visualized uh, this diagram over here, I only show you what can be achieved, but I didn't show you how exactly to achieve it. So that's why this week we want to start with the basic, the foundational uh, updates for the uh, uh, multi-value reference type attributes. So that's what, what I would like to do now. And uh, let me just get prepared. And there is another uh, attributes over here. Okay, uh, you know what? I think I need to also follow the uh, the, uh, the pattern that we, uh, the uh, practice that we set before. So every attributes for the uh, uh, class should be private, right? So let me just copy the private here. The trainer should be private. And also facilities should also be private. And here, the NOF uh, standing for number of facilities should also be private, right? It should be. I didn't add it uh, uh, last time, but we should do it uh, now, this week. 
All right. So, uh, of course, we also got get trainer somewhere. You can see get trainer is going to make sure whenever you want to get access to this particular private attributes, you have to call this particular uh, public method, right? You never try to get access to the private attribute directly. You are not allowed to, right? It's simply forbidden. It will be a compilation error. Instead, you're going to use a public uh, access method to get access to it. All right. All right. Uh, let's now try to uh, understand about these two uh, attributes, to, uh, how they work together. 